want to make a fancy sign frame like this in a few simple steps I'll show you how to do it okay this one's already made so basically all I did to you to make this was use a few tools like the rectangle tool obviously the, the new one's not going to be identical but I'm going to make one similar and my circle tool I hold control and pull that down at an angle that will make a symmetrical circle so roughly make one roughly that size and then I'll do one roughly oh, like this now I've made a rectangle and three circles so now what I'm going to do is I've got my snapping tool turned on up here enable snapping then I'm going to come over here to this function and select snap centers of objects now with that turned on when I move this the circle is going to snap you see it snapping here to the center of this rectangle that way I know that's centered up right where I want it I'm going to change the color of that just so you can see now I'm going to change the color of this to blue and I'm going to pull this over and let it snap the center of this circle to the corner of this rectangle now I'm going to hit control D which is going to duplicate that and I'll snap it down here control D snap it to this corner control D pull this up snap it to this corner now I've got my four circles to notch my corners out there I'm going to hold shift and select the other three then I will hit path union to union those now I can hold shift select that rectangle and hit path difference so now I've notched the corners out similar to this one now I can hold shift select this circle it's already centered where I snapped it to the center hit path union now I've made this basic same frame that I have up here in the example I will make that similar in size to this one this one's roughly we'll just call it 15 inches I'll lock my ratio here and I have it set to inches and I'll set it to 15 inches now I'll put that there now to make this border that I put around this and make it evenly spaced all the way around it's gonna be another easy little step here I'm gonna select this shape hit control D again I'll change the color to like blue actually I'm going to turn the fill color off and hold shift and select like red or blue or whatever to turn the stroke on now I'm going to come over to my fill and stroke menu and set my stroke width I usually go with something like 625 thousandths on the stroke width and what that will do what I'm wanting to do oh didn't mean to hit those equal signs there I'm wanting to leave roughly a quarter inch in here and then have an eighth inch cut out here for the border so you basically have to double your stroke width because let me let me page this stroke down just to show and I'll page it back up and just to make it a little more visible here I'm going to turn the opacity down on that you see when I set my stroke width half of the width is on the outside half is on the inside so it if I go bigger it'll go half this way and half that way so I go basically double what I want my spacing here to be plus a little to account for this eighth inch here that's why I'm going with 625 thousandths long story short anyway I will turn my opacity back up if I can select it there back up to a hundred so now I've set this stroke width to 625 thousandths. I'm going to select that and go path, stroke to path. So now that's a path. Now I'm going to go path, break apart. 
I'm going to click off of it. As you can see, there's two objects selected there. I'm going to select this one, the outside. It's hard to see there's both of them there, but if I page this down, you see this is the inner piece, that's the outer piece. I'm selecting the outer piece and delete. So now I have my original path back here and the inside part of that stroke I just broke apart. So now I'm going to select that, turn the fill off again, hold shift, and I'm going to select blue to turn the fill back on. Now I'm going to turn my fill down to an eighth of an inch because it's still at the 625 thousandths. And now I have an eighth inch, what will be my border cut out there. So now I'll select that and once again go path, stroke to path. So now that has been changed from a stroke into a path. Now the only thing left to do is to cut. Okay, I'm going to turn my stroke back off by holding shift and selecting the X. Then I'm going to select red for the fill color. So now I'm going to make my cuts here to bridge the outside border there. So I'm going to go with 200 thousands on my width. I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to hold shift. Actually, I still have my center snapping on, so I can just pull that till it snaps to the center of that object. Oh, sorry. Scrolled out there. Now I'm going to hit that. Control D. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to make it shorter. And then I will come over here. Zoom in. I'm going to turn it to rotate. Hold control and that will kind of index it. And then I'm going to let that snap right here to this point. I'll hit control D. I will flip it horizontally. And I will come over here and let it snap to that point. Hit control D. Now I'll flip it vertically. Bring this up. Let it snap to that point. Hit control D. Flip it horizontally again. I'll bring this one over here, snap to this point. Now I'm going to control D, bring this over here. And I'm going to index this again by holding control, pulling it one more turn there. Now I'll let that snap, control D. I'm going to flip that vertically, pull that down here. Let, I just want to snap in the wrong spot. Let it snap to that corner. Control D. I'm going to flip that again. Let that snap there. Control D. Pull this up here. Flip it one more time. And snap that there. Now I've got all my bridges where I want them. I'm going to just drag a box here, select everything. Then I'm going to hold Shift, unselect the background, and unselect that border. Then I'm going to path union to union all those bridges together. Now I'm going to hold shift, select my little border there, path difference that slices that out. Now I can hold shift, select my background, path difference, and now I've essentially duplicated what I did up here. So the only thing left to do would be you're probably when you convert convert the stroke to a path you're going to get a few extra little stray nodes like these if you come in here and highlight these hover your cursor over the corner there hit shift j that'll join those two and i do that in these little spots when they're close enough to the corner there you just hit shift j join them and that will keep from screwing your contour up there too much if I just delete them, sometimes it'll it'll change my path there more than I want it to. So I'll go around, join these. It looks like it, you know, does it pretty consistently in the same spots when you convert that stroke to a path. Shift J. So basically, I've created the the sign I wanted. The only thing left is just a little cleanup run around here 
it's pretty much going to be the same spots all the way around. So I'm just shift J, highlighting two, hover over till one turns red, shift J. Boss rose out there. Okay, highlight these two, hover over, shift J. These two, shift J. Last one, shift J, and that should be, yep, that's about all the cleanup that needs. So, just simply using our circle tool, rectangle tool, and our center snapping, and then our fill and stroke tool, we're able to create some pretty cool vintage looking sign borders to cut out on our CNC tables. Hope that helps some people out. Thanks for watching. I ain't going nowhere.